صلى على محمد وآل محمد Who has brought a copy of the Holy Quran with him today? MashaAllah, MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Ahsantum, MashaAllah. You should be proud. And for the family members that are with you, be proud. Now hold the Holy Quran to your heart. Hold it to your heart. And if you don't have a copy of the Holy Quran with you, it's okay. Tomorrow you will bring it. From your car, you'll bring it. From your home, you'll bring it. And if anyone here does not have a copy of the Holy Quran with them, you don't have one at home, you don't have one in the car, you can't find one from a family member, if you do not have a copy of the Holy Quran, please come see me. I'm not going to ask you to go and see any one of the team members and shift that responsibility and shift that to somebody else. Come and see me after the program and I will personally gift you a copy of the Holy Quran. Don't accept for yourself not to have the Holy Quran with you in your life. Good? If you don't have a copy of the Holy Quran, I will personally give you a copy of the Holy Quran and that's my greatest honor to serve you with that gift. Now place your hand on your heart and repeat after me. I need your help today. Are you willing to help me today? I need some energy today. I need some passion today. Are you willing to help me today? Allah is my Lord. Allah is my Lord. Allah is my Lord. Islam is my religion. Islam is my religion. Islam is my religion. The Quran is my book. The Quran is my book. The Quran is my book. Muhammad is my prophet. Muhammad is my prophet. Muhammad is my prophet. Ali is my Imam. Ali is my Imam. Ali is my Imam. Ahsantum salawat. You see the, those last two statements that we made, Muhammad is my prophet, Ali is my imam. The holy prophet Muhammad sallallahu said, Ana wa Ali al -umma. Ali and I are the fathers of this nation. You see what's amazing about our holy prophet Muhammad sallallahu is when he referred to his nation, it was a reference to anyone that said La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Anyone. And that by the way, wasn't limited to the time that he was in. Ummat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa alayhi, The nation, the community, the people of Muhammad are here today. And he said, my nation, my community, my people, Ali and I, we are your fathers. I want you to reflect on that for a moment. Inshallah, you all have your fathers in your life. And if your fathers are not in your, in your life, may Allah rest their souls, bless their souls. But I want you to dig deeper into this idea of fatherhood from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. No matter what your relationship is with your father, no matter what your relationship is with your biological father, I want you to realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fills you with a father that will never let you down. Fills you with a role model that will never lead you astray. Fills you with a love of two men that look at you and accept you as you are but tell you you're better, keep growing. You're better, keep moving. And I'm here to support you. I'm here for you. You see, as human beings, we have complex relationships. And it's okay. That's the test of humanity. It's not simple. I take that back. It's not easy. It is simple. 
But human beings were kind of complicated. Life, simple. The guidance, simple. What we need to do, simple. Is it easy? Absolutely not. But the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu looking at you and I, and him being the beloved of God, Habibullah, he looks at you and I, and he gives that love, that compassion, that mercy. And that's why God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, described him as rahmatan lil alameen, a mercy to all of mankind. So you and I, when we're looking, where am I going in life? I, I need some guidance. I need direction. I want you to realize the blessing that you have as followers of Ahlul Bayt, as Shia of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. I want you to realize this. Your relationship with the Holy Quran, this holy book that you and I carry every single night. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi was the guide for this book. He was not a messenger that merely gave you something and went away. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi as the messenger of God was the embodiment of this book. Now why do you think as followers of Ahlul Bayt, as Shia, and we proudly say our name as Shia, and by the way, and this is something that you and I need to understand, when you proudly say Shia, it doesn't mean you're taking away from your identity as a Muslim. It doesn't mean that you're not proud to be a Muslim and that you want to distinguish yourself and separate yourselves from your Muslim brothers and sisters that are from different schools of thought. That's not the case here. The reality is the emphasis on Ali ibn Abi Talib, on Al Hassan wal Hussein, on Al Zahra alayhi salam is to do what? The Prophet emphasized, so we emphasize. When our Sunni brothers and sisters emphasize the Sunnah, as in the tradition of Rasulullah, following the path of the Prophet, we say, yes, that's what we're doing. We're emphasizing the Sunnah, following his tradition. Now the difference is where? A narrative. What's the narrative of the Sunnah? What's your version of the Sunnah? What's your version of the tradition of the Prophet and what he emphasized? And that's the difference. And that's why history is so important. So you and I, when we're looking just merely at the event of Ashura and digging deeper onto what happened on the battlefield, today we're going to talk about a few individuals. We're going to talk about the likes of Burair, a hafiz of the Quran. This man memorized the Quran. In Kufa, he was known as the master of reciters. Imagine this. He lived in Kufa. Remember in the previous night when I said Amr ibn Sa'id or Amr ibn al-Hajjaj, he led that cavalry that attacked Habib's flank and Muslim ibn Awsaja was killed afterwards. And that flank that was attacked, it was attacked by cavalry from Kufa. So imagine these men that were coming from Kufa. <laughs> Burair is in the battlefield and they see him and he is known as the master of reciters. So people had literally listened to Burair reciting Quran. So imagine as the recitation, mashallah, of Sayyid Ahmad al Musawi every night, he's reciting Quran. People know him, mashallah, beautiful reciter. Then imagine seeing him on the other side. When Burair is coming forward into the battlefield, they attack him. And Burair is having a fight like no other. One guy comes, slain. Next guy comes, slain. But they're challenging him. They're challenging him. A man by Yazid comes forward, attacks him, slays. Then more come forward and they ambush him. One of the particular individuals that came and attacked Burair, he bested him, got on top of him, and then one of his friends came from behind and then shoved a spear into his back. Burair falls forward onto the man that he initially bested. It's, by the way, it's very hard to talk about this at times. And when I get up here, I'm living it with you. So when I'm telling it, it's, it's, it's difficult. 
Because when you dive into the history and you read about these individuals' lives and you see what they sacrificed, what they left behind, like this man could have stayed in Kufa. He was respected in his community. He used to sit and recite Quran. Everyone respected him and loved him. But when Imam al Hussein السلام, called, he, he literally left everything and joined the Imam al Hussein. And, and, and as they were killing him, some people around them from the camp of, of Yazid, they looked and they were shocked. They were like, You're killing Burair, the master of reciters. We literally just listened to him reading Quran a few weeks ago. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine how confusing it was? They found themselves on the battlefield, killing a man that they were just listening to recite Quran. But they killed him. They killed him. And, and, and then when Imam Al-Hussein would come and mourn his friends, each one that would die, and typically, and you'll hear it in the Maqtal on the day of Ashura, on the 10th, you'll hear every single one of them when they fell, the last thing they called out was, Assalamu alaikum ya Aba Abdullah. So Imam Al Hussein, each one of those times, tried his best to go in. Of course, his companions protecting him as much as he could. But again, they wouldn't stop. The arrows kept on showering upon them, they kept on falling. Remember Hur? Remember Hur? So a lot of times when we, we talk about the story of Hur, we talk about it, Hur repents, goes to Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam, and then is one of the first to give his life. It, it's a little bit deeper than that, okay? Hur fought back to back, like literally back to back with Zuhair ibn al-Qayn. Remember Zuhair, we mentioned he was the leader of the left flank of Imam al-Hussein's army. And he's fighting back to back with Zuhair. And they're fighting valiantly in, in it, in the battle, back and forth, back and forth. And you know who's watching Hur? The police chief of Kufa. His name was Al Hussein. Not Al Hussein, Al Hussein. So when you're reading it in English, by the way, when you're reading it from the book, just pay, pay close attention to the, the spelling, right? So there's a number of individuals named Al Hussein. There was Al Hussein ibn Numair. And I believe this one was Al Hussein ibn Thabit. Al Hussein was the police chief of Kufa, and he was watching Hur just slaying the men. And the way the way he is watching, he's just admiring him. By the way, when Hur had left Yazid's army, remember I had mentioned previously. There was over 30,000 soldiers. It was a very large group of people. So if one or a few people left, it wasn't readily noticeable. There was another man by the name of Yazid, who he, when he found out that Hur left, his name was Yazid ibn Sufyan. Different than Yazid ibn Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. So this Yazid ibn Sufyan, when he noticed that Hur had left, He's like, oh man, if I knew that he had left and I saw him leaving, I would have killed him on the spot. So then, he's standing next to the police chief of Kufa, Al Hussein, watching Al Hur slay between these men. And Al Hussein looks at him and he said, You said you wanted to kill him. Have at it. You think you can take Hur on? Take him on. He's like, Yes, I will. So he goes into the battlefield and he calls out to Hur. He says, fight me, Hur, fight me. So Hur says, sure, no problem. You got to see Hur right now. The man was a man of character. But he was on the wrong side of the battlefield initially. He made mistakes. And then when the time came, when the time came to make the decision of what his fate would really be, he made the right decision. So now he's on the side of Imam al-Hussein salam and he's fighting. And he's fighting this guy Yazid ibn Sufyan. And Al-Hussein is still watching. And what's interesting about this individual Al-Hussein is that he wasn't rooting for Hur. But he saw that he was the better man. 
So he turns to the men with him that are watching Yazid ibn Sufyan fight Al Hur. And he said, and I want you to pay attention to this expression by God, the man fights as if his soul is in his own hands. I want you to think about that for a second. The man fights as if his soul is in between his own hands. Meaning he has a malaka. He owns his self. He is a master of his own self. He is dictating what's going to happen. He's telling death where to go. Can you imagine that? That's how he's being admired. Al-Hur, master of the battlefield. Lion in the battlefield. He looks at the man and he's like, Yazid is going to be slain very soon. The best man is going to come out. And they're like, how do you know? They turn to him, how do you know? Then he says, because it already happened. And Hur slayed Yazid ibn Sufyan. So one after the other, they say over 40 men, Al-Hur slayed. He killed. And then they had enough. So they ambushed Hur. They ambushed Hur. And when Hur fell, he said, Assalamu alaikum ya Abu Abdullah. They overwhelmed him. Zuhair tries, because he was busy fighting some other men. He tries to get to Hur in time. But Hur was in his final breaths. He grabs Hur, takes him to Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam, carries him to Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam. And Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam says, Hur, your mother gave you the best name for you because you are free in this life and the next. And Hur in his last breath, he just smiles. Do you know who history tells us recited words of poetry in honor of Al-Hur on the day of Ashura? Ali Al-Akbar. You see, when you look at the history and you read, then you start seeing how these individuals interacted with one another. And you may be thinking, wow, I wasn't even thinking about Ali al-Akbar until it was time for all of the companions after they all died. And then Ali al-Akbar comes forward. No, no, no. Ali al-Akbar is rooting for al-Hur. And then he praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and recites poetry, a tribute for al-Hur. And I'm going to translate it the best I can. Glory be to Hur, the free amongst men. He was a lion in the battlefield. None could match him. Glory be to Hur, who answered the call of Hussein and helped him in his sacrifice, in his pain. Glory be to Hur. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine Ali al Akbar going forward and giving those couplets? Can you imagine? One after the other, Burair, Hur, Zuhair. One after the other, they're given their lives. Remember briefly, I mentioned the attack on the tents. So when Umar ibn Sa'd wasn't liking what was going on, he wanted to end this quickly. In fact, because the time of prayer was coming, it was literally right, up, right before Dhuhr. Right before Dhuhr, Umar ibn Sa'd is like, man, just, we need to end this quick. The time of prayer is going to come. It's going to complicate things a little bit further. So he tells Shimr, Shimr, launch an attack on the tents. Shimr says, okay, no problem. Going to launch an attack on the tents. So Shimr al goes and attacks the tents. Goes from behind the camp. Zuhair intercepts him with some of his cavalry. Flanks them. Then Shimr al as he is attacking, one of the men follows him from his own camp. His name was Shabbath. He tells him, Shimr, 
Have you now stooped down that law that you've lost every single, every iota of any kind of valor or character? Have you completely lost it? You're attacking women now? Women and children? And it's said that Shimmer felt a little bit of shame. A little bit of shame. A little bit of shame. Until what? He goes back to Umar ibn Sa'd. You know what Umar ibn Sa'd tells him? Because he's like, I don't see flame and blaze. Why are the tents not on fire? Why are the tents not on fire, Shimr? He tells them, Zuhair ibn al-Qayn thwarted our attack. He said, then think of something else. He said, don't worry, I'll think of something else. He goes back. The time of prayer is upon them. What does Imam al Hussein alayhi salam do? Abu Thumama had mentioned a previous night. He had told Imam al Hussein alayhi salam as they were being attacked. Because, by the way, there were so many attacks that were coming. They were not observing any of the rules of engagement. So, launching of arrows, attacking with their cavalry around the, the tents and the campground, everything was going on. So, Abu Thumama reminds the Imam, says, Imam, or doesn't remind the Imam, tells the Imam, the time of prayer is just about to happen. The Imam السلام, tells him, May Allah reward you for bringing forth the memory of prayer. The Imam sends Habib ibn Mudahir to go and tell the people, Umar ibn Sa'd, the commander of the other army, tell them, can we have a brief ceasefire in order for us to pray? Now I want you to imagine this. Who is Habib ibn Mudahir? Habib ibn Mudahir, on the day of Ashura, he was 75 years old. 75. He was a senior amongst them. When Muslim ibn Aqil had come to Kufa, you know who he relied on in his support? He relied on Habib ibn Mulahir. He relied on Muslim ibn Awsaja. He relied on Habis, some of these senior companions. But Habib was the foremost amongst them. The foremost. Habib was 27 years old at the death of Rasulullah. He was a companion of the Prophet. Can you imagine that? So Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, how old was he when the Prophet passed away? When the Prophet alayhi died? He was about five, six years old. Right? Habib ibn Mudahir was 27. Habib ibn Mudahir was a full adult. He was a companion of the Prophet. Habib ibn Mudahir was a companion of the Prophet, a companion of Imam Ali alayhi salam. He was a close friend of his. One of the few loyal ones. So when Habib comes forward into the battlefield and he goes and tells them, the time of prayer has come. Let us have a ceasefire. Let us stop just for a few moments so that we all can pray. One of the men responds to him, al Hussein ibn Numair. He says, your prayers are not accepted. He said, Hussein's prayers are not accepted. He said, Hussein's prayers are not accepted. Hussein is going to hell. This is the ignorance that he's speaking to. He said, Ibn Rasulullah, the grandson of the Holy Prophet, his only surviving descendant, he's going to hell. And you know what they did? As he was trying to talk to them and basically knock some sense into them. Like, what are you saying? What are you saying? It's one thing for a person to say, I don't believe in what you believe. I'm not a Muslim. I want to fight you. But no, what they're saying is the person who was the representative of Islam, he's like, no, you're not it. No. You're wrong. You're going to hell. By the way, Imam al-Hussein and his companions, they weren't once coming forward and saying, you guys are all going to hell. They were saying, listen, let's pray. Pause. You know, we know you want to kill us. Just pause. Let us pray. He's about to recite the adhan. They attacked Habib. They attacked Habib. And they ambushed him. And Habib, the 75-year-old man, is fighting against 
these hyenas. The senior of a line, a champion of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. They say on the day of Ashura, Habib, when he was attacked, he killed over 60 men. But then again, how is it going to show against 30,000 when Imam al Hussein alayhi salam just had 100 men? Keep that in mind. I want you to keep that in mind as we're going back and forth, back and forth. When Habib ibn Mudahar finally falls on the land of Karbala, Imam al Hussein alayhi salam mourns him, cries over him, recites praise over him, the man of virtue, the man of loyalty, the man who wouldn't leave the Prophet, wouldn't leave my father, wouldn't leave me. And that, by the way, when Habib fell on the day of Ashura, it pained Lady Zainab. Remember when we talked about Habib yesterday, Lady Zainab السلام, was so happy that Habib was with them. He was a companion of her grandfather, a companion of her father. And now supporting Imam al Hussein السلام, in his last days, in his last moments. They would kill Habib and then they would continue to attack. There wasn't any, there wasn't any breaks. But guess what? Imam al Hussein السلام, looks to his companions. Zuhair ibn al Qain takes permission from Imam al Hussein السلام, who tells him before he goes out because he wants to defend the honor of Habib. And I want you to imagine the personality of Zuhair ibn al Qain and who, who had just fallen as well, Hur. Remember Muslim? Remember Burair? Remember how Burair was the master reciter? We just re mentioned him. You know what Hur and Zuhair did as soon as Burair was killed? They recited Quran as they fought in the battlefield. In his honor. So imagine as they're swinging their swords, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. They're reciting the whole Quran and swinging their swords in honor of Burair. And they're saying, for you, my brother, for the Quran that you recited, for the Quran that you protected, for you, my brother. Zuhair was similar. And man, Zuhair had a personality. He looked at Imam al Hussein alayhi salam before going into the battlefield. And he asked the Imam, Ya Aba Abdullah, are we not on the path of truth? He said, Yes, of course we are. By God, we are. Then we have nothing to worry about. For we will meet our death and we will see paradise with Rasulullah. Look at that confidence, Look at that strength. Zuhair was the same one who, on the eve of Ashura, the night before, he stood up. Under the night sky, when Imam al Hussein السلام, give the, gave them all the freedom to leave him without any guilt, without anything. Leave, save your own souls. Zuhair said, Ya Aba Abdullah, Ya Ibn Rasulullah, O grandson of our Prophet, we will die for you, and if we are burned and die a thousand times over, we will never leave you. So I have a question for each and every one of you. Will you leave Imam al Hussein? I have a question. Will you leave Imam al Hussein? 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 So when I say ya, yeah, what do you say? Ya? 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 There are people that do not like to hear you say that name. There are people that want to strip you from your identity in Hussein, in Hassan, in Ali, in Fatima, in Muhammad. There are people that want to take the Holy Quran from you and tell you what you should believe in. There are people that today will tell you in your face, we're going to take your children away from you.
There are people today that will tell you, we will force you to adopt our lifestyle. We will force you to live the way we want to live. We will force you to believe what we believe and you will be tolerant towards it. You will accept us and make it your way of life. And we will take it from you. Take your children, take your family, take your beliefs and we will stomp all over it. Believe it. It's happening before our eyes. When are you and I going to have the confidence the confidence we're not here to attack anybody we're not interested we don't need to that's weakness that's weakness Yazid and the likes of Yazid would attack and kill and persecute as the Shia of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad we're not interested in those tactics but you know what we are interested in we are confident in who we are you and I, for the sake of our children, I'm asking you here tonight. Alhamdulillah, we are blessed. You are all here blessed, mashaAllah. Barakat Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam, the blessings of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam are here. Amazing. Amazing. But I want to ask you something. How many of us, and not to put anyone, not to put anyone in any feeling of guilt, any feeling of, oh, I'm not good enough. No, 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 not at all. But we're here to reflect. We're here to reflect. We're here to see what do we need to do in order for us to protect ourselves and our families. We belong to the societies that we live in. Don't feel like you're an outcast. Don't feel like, oh, I'm, this is not, I don't belong here. No, no, you belong here. This is your community. This is your city. This is your county, this is your state, this is your country, just as, just as it is for anybody else. And as Muslims, we believe in diversity. We believe in tolerance. But guess what? That tolerance is not that people become intolerant of you. And you have to change who you are in order for other people to like you. We're not looking for people's acceptance. Our acceptance and our validation is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to see that for ourselves. You and I, brothers and sisters, we should not be falling into the traps of trying to appease other people who do not care about what you and I believe in. In all respect to every community, in every background, in everything that they have. You are free to do what you want. And Imam al-Hussein on the day of Ashura, you know what he told them? To the people that wanted to kill him. He said, if you wish not to be free in your afterlife, meaning what? There's heaven and hell. We have a moral system. We have our faith, our religion. If you wish not to be free in your religion, in your faith, the afterlife, then be free in this life. Be free in this life. We as a community of faithful, of believers, we're not here to impose ourselves on anyone. We don't believe that. Particularly as followers of Ahlul Bayt Alayhi Salam. Imam al Sadiq Alayhi Salam, he guided his companions. He advised his companions, told them, do not impose yourself on the people. Leave people alone. If they ask you, then educate. If they ask you again, then continue to educate. But don't go and try to proselytize people. Don't try to go and convert people. This is, by the way, a lot of people may not realize this. Shia Muslims are probably one of the few groups in the whole world that don't believe in actively going out and trying to convert people into their own faith. If you come to the faith, guidance is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Beautiful. But I'm not interested in going to my Christian neighbor or my Sunni brother and saying, you need to believe as I believe or I'm not going to have any kind of connection with you. No, no, no. You're my neighbor. You're my brother. No problem. But what does that do in turn? Does that mean that you don't hold strong to your own beliefs and your own values? No, absolutely not. We need to have the confidence to live 
to be. There's an attack right now in our communities, in our children, in many different ways. I want you to be thinking to yourself, what are you and I designing in a schedule and a lifestyle for our families? What are we doing? Again, it's summertime. Alhamdulillah, we're here in the Majalis of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Every year, by the way, it goes back 10, 11 days, correct? In the lunar calendar. So Muharram is going to be in the summer for a minute, probably about, about another eight years or so. And people typically go on vacation in the summer, right? There's nothing wrong with going on vacation. But is it something that we have in the lifestyle of our home, in the schedule that we have as a family, that when we're planning things, should we not consider the 10 days of Muharram? Should we not be thinking about the 10 days of Muharram? And by the way, the 10 days of Muharram is a minimum. I am so proud to say I'm a product of Dearborn, Michigan. I'm proud to say I was born and raised here. Proud. But you and I, being in this community, we also have a responsibility. People look to us. People are watching online, looking to us. People, by the way, you may not realize, in the crowd here, we have visitors that are coming from different parts of the country. You may not realize it. We have guests here from outside of our community and we are honored to have each and every one of you. We have a responsibility. These 10 days, beautiful. But guys, my family, respectfully, it doesn't stop at the 10th day. This is actually just us preparing. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, the tragedy happened on the 10th day. Many of us stop mourning after the 10th day. What kind of culture do we want to have for our community? Religion is a foundation for us to be successful in every aspect of our lives. We want us to be successful in business. We want us to be successful in education. We want us to be successful in our careers. We want us to be successful physically, spiritually, intellectually, socially, financially. Every aspect of our life, we need to be successful in it. And Islam provides us that foundation if we want to actually take it. The decision is yours and mine alone. I can't force you to be a certain way. You can't force me to be a certain way. But are we actually making that move or not? Every single night, I'm trying to take an opportunity to look at my sisters and look at my brothers. Honor you because you, are, you should be honored. You should be respected. We need to raise the bar for each other. Alhamdulillah, our community, we stand on the shoulders of giants. I wouldn't be here today if it were not the sacrifices of those who came before me and those who are still here with us. I can't do this alone. Remember the first night I introduced this book. And I'm going to say it again for those who weren't here. This book, it has my name on it. Wallah. I'm bahlif. Wallah. I don't deserve the credit. This book is not possible without a team of so many people that made this possible. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us, continues to bless us. What do we do with those opportunities? You're here right now. You're here right now. Some of us come in with certain challenges, struggles that they're going through, and they're looking for inspiration. They're looking for some type of movement. And we're bringing forth these stories. And hopefully, the story of Al-Hur at least says, you know what, it's never too late. It's never too late. You can always change. I haven't prayed. Right behind you. That Musallah. Go, pray. Imam Al-Hussein is going to be smiling at you if you go and pray. You get up and pray. Abu Thumama told Imam Al-Hussein it's the time of prayer. Habib goes forward and is killed trying to get the men to stop. They don't stop. They kill Habib. They continue to shower the camp of Imam al Hussein salam with arrows. It is said that Abu Thumama recites the Adhan. Imagine. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. 
says that arrows are showering upon them. They're shielding themselves. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. They don't stop. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa think the other side they're hearing the the name of Allah they're going to stop maybe no no again more arrows more and then what You know who's blocking the arrows? <laughs> Saeed and Zuhair. As the Imam al Hussein is leading his men in prayer, they're just jumping back and forth with their shields, blocking the men, the few that are remaining. And Saeed, at the end of the prayer, he falls, having received so many arrows, all arrows that were supposed to be for the Imam al Hussein. He receives those arrows. And he's fallen, and Imam al Hussein picks him up. And he asks Imam Hussein this question Did I fulfill my duty towards you, Ya Aba Abdullah? And Imam al Hussein said, Yes, you absolutely did, Sa'id. When Imam al Hussein, as you're seeing with each one of these companions, he's holding them, embracing them in their final moments. They're asking him usually a question Did I fulfill my duty? Did I do what I was supposed to? I don't want to leave you. Imam al Hussein reassuring them May Allah reward you. It's said that when Imam al Hussein السلام, was holding Hur in his final moments, remember that smile that I mentioned between him and Hur? Imam al Hussein السلام, wiped the blood from the face of Hur. And said, as he wiped away the blood from his face, from his eyes, Allah accepts you, Har. You are free. As we're remembering the companions tonight and you shed tears, I pray that Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam wipes away your tears and tells you, Allah accepts your repentance. You are free. That's what this is all about. That movement towards your better self. That reform within. You are amazing. You are capable. Let yourself be. Be inspired for that movement. These individuals that sacrificed everything so you and I can know what it really means to be with Allah. Allah. 
I ask that you all recite with me and inshallah we'll make this something every night again the majlis of Imam al Hussein is not a passive one this is for your heart it's for my heart it's for all of our hearts and sending our condolences to the Imam of our time Sahib al Asr al Zaman as we mourn his grandfather if I tell you this tale of sorrow Will you lend me your hearts to borrow? Will you shed a tear for Hussein? Will you remember Zainab's pain? Recite with me. If I tell you this tale of sorrow, will you lend me your hearts to borrow? I can't hear you. And if we stay here tonight until tomorrow, will you bear this tale of sorrow? Listen here to Hussein's story, a story of heartache and glory, a story of heartache and glory. One more time. If I tell you this tale of sorrow, Will you lend me your hearts to borrow? Will you shed a tear for Hussein? Will you remember Zainab's pain? And if we stay here tonight until tomorrow, will you bear this tale of sorrow? Listen here to Hussein's story, a story of heartache and glory, a story of heartache and glory. On the day of Ashura, in the land of Karbala, when Al Imam Al Hussein saw his companions going forward one by one giving their lives in the way of Allah Al-Imam Al-Hussein would bid them each farewell give them each glad tidings as they all saw their destination as they all saw their fate with Allah but imagine the pain in the heart of an Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam, seeing the companions of his grandfather, the friends of his father, the friends of his brother, his own friends and loyal companions, give themselves one after the other. Imagine brothers and sisters on that day when Imam Al Hussein would walk between the bodies of his fallen warriors, and Imam Al Hussein would call out, Zuhair, Buray. Muslim Habib. This is after all of them had fallen, all of the companions of Imam Al Hussein had fallen on that day. He walks between their corpses, between their fallen bodies, and he's calling their names Zuhair Burair. Muslim Habib, my champions, my lions, why is it that I call you and you do not respond? The Imam is lamenting them, the Imam is eulogizing them, mourning them. He says, rise my men, rise oh friends of Haydar. But no response to the grandson of Rasulullah. 
Brothers and sisters, on the day of Ashura, as we mention all of these tragedies and the sacrifices of these men, know that the greatest tragedy, the greatest sacrifice was that of Al Imam Al Hussein. For as every one of these soldiers would fall, they too knew that they were falling for Hussein. They too knew that even even though they would give their lives, Al Imam Al Hussein would be left all alone in the land of Karbala. Al Imam Al Hussein, as he would mourn his companions and his friends, I want you to remember on that day. When Imam Al Hussein would see his own sons fall, when he would see his own brothers fall, when Imam Al Hussein, after tragedy after tragedy, would look to the heavens and call out, Ya Allah. This is easier for me because I know that you see me. Ya Allah, witness upon the people. Who are they killing? Who are they oppressing? Who are they transgressing against? Brothers and sisters, these are men that gave their lives on the day of Ashura. Thirsty, alone. Al Imam Al Hussein, as he would mourn his companions. And as he would see the numbers of his men dwindle one by one. What was the state of the heart of Zainab, Zainab? Could you imagine what was Zainab going through as she would see Imam Al Hussein walk in the battlefield all alone with no friends and no companions, no supporters on the day of calling out wa qillata al imam al hussein saying oh how little our number is hal min nasirin yansuruna hal min mu'inin yu'inuna is there anyone to aid us is there anyone to support us Imagine on the day of Ashura, brothers and sisters, Al Imam Al Hussein. But the companions would give their all, the companions would sacrifice themselves. The companions would not let Al Imam Al Hussein to die without them giving their lives for him. So imagine the voices of Habib, of Zuhair, calling out and filling the land, not just in Karbala. Not just at this time, but forever into the valleys of eternity. I will die a thousand deaths for you, Ya I will die a thousand deaths. For you, Ya Hussein, listen carefully. 
And I will live a thousand more through you, Ya Hussein. I will die a thousand deaths for you, Ya Hussein. And I will live a thousand more through you, Ya Hussein. For what is life without your love? Ya Hussein, with me. For what is life without your love? Ya Hussein. For what is life without your love? Ya Hussein. Do you love Hussein? For without your love, what is life? Ya. I can't hear you. What is life without your love? Hussein. Habib says, My brothers, come here close and hear me now. This is a tribute to the companions, what they did on the day of Ashura. My brothers, come here close and hear me now. We will not surrender, we will not bow. If we burn here tonight, we burn together. We will not leave Hussein, his sister and brother. The world will sing our sorrows, for we stood with Hussein, 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 with Hussein. With Hussein, with Hussein, with Hussein, with Hussein, with Hussein, with Hussein.